ECDL Advanced Access Lesson 12 Input Masks Input masks control how data is entered and displayed in a field. The input mask field property in Design View is used. A combination of different symbols is entered which defines the way in which data in that field is expected to be entered and how it will be shown. The symbols used are shown here on the screen. So, if we want to indicate a number, we use a 0 if it is required, and a 9 if it's not required. A hash symbol is used for a number, or a plus sign, or a minus sign, or a space, and it is if entry is not required. If the character must be a letter, it's a capital L if entry is required, and a question mark if it's not. If we want to indicate a letter or a number, it's a capital A if it's required, and a lowercase a if it's not. If we wish to allow any character or a space, it's an ampersand sign, that's an AND symbol, if it is required, and a capital C if it is not required. Other than that, a full stop and a comma indicates decimal points and the thousands separator. A colon and a forward slash are used as date and time separators. A less than sign converts characters to the right to lowercase. A greater than sign converts characters to the right to uppercase. It's an exclamation mark if the mask is to be filled from right to left. And finally, a backslash makes the character that follows to be displayed as itself. For example, backslash 9 will be displayed just as a 9, so as not to get confused with a number that is not required. A wizard is available with some preset masks, and we'll look through these during this lesson. OK, let's open the CIA database and display the Customer Details table in Design View. Select the Telephone field and click in the Input Mask field property. The Build button appears on the right. Click on it once to view the Input Mask wizard. The predefined masks presented by the Input Mask wizard are region dependent. Different regions will display different formats for the same mask, such as phone number, and possibly different masks. For example, the US has a zip code mask. The operation of mask characters and techniques for creating and applying masks are always the same. Select phone number from the input mask box and click Next. Click Next on this screen without changing any settings and choose to store the data with the symbols in the mask and then click Next. Finally, click Finish. The mask appears in the telephone field property. The 9 signifies that a number may be entered in that position. The zero signifies a number must be entered. Both nines and zeros signify numeric entry only. The mask characters end at the first semicolon. OK, let's save the table and switch to Datasheet View. Notice existing data is not checked against the mask. Let's now add a new record entering any details at all.
but leave the telephone field blank. This results in an error message because the field is now required. Let's try to enter ABC in the telephone field. This will not be allowed. The entry must be numeric. So let's type some numbers. 1, 2, 3. Then press Enter. An error message will be shown, including the format of the appropriate input mask. Click OK. Highlight the 123 entry and delete it. Position the cursor immediately after the brackets and type 12345678. This fits the mask and should be accepted. The mask can be modified directly in field properties without using the wizard. So let's switch to design view. And we're going to change the mask to forward slash open brackets 0009 and leave the rest as it is. The first three zeros means that at least three numbers of an area code must be entered. OK, let's save the table and switch to datasheet view. Let's create a new record, entering any details at all. A telephone number without an area code will not now be accepted. So let's enter 0123 4567 890 and then press enter. OK, so this fits the mask. Let's switch to design view. Select the telephone field and click in the Input Mask Field property. Click and drag to highlight the entire content of the Input Mask field and press Delete. The Input Mask has now been removed. OK, if you could save the table and then close it and then close the database. I'm sure you'll have fun delving into different kinds of Input Mask. Your next job is Lesson 13, which is the revision exercise from Section 2, which will check your knowledge on lookup fields, looking up from a table, default values, mandatory fields, validation rules and text, and now input masks that we've just looked at. OK, I hope this is all making sense, and I look forward to seeing you next time when we'll start Section 3 and introduce the concept of queries. OK, looking forward to seeing you then.